Everybody ready? All right, good morning. My name is Brian Manley. I'm the Chief of Staff for the Austin Police Department. I've got members of the Executive and Command Team here along with uh, supervisors for the Downtown Area Command and uh, Command from the uh, EMS uh, Services as well. Uh, we want to give you a briefing on what has occurred early this morning on 6th Street. I know that you all are aware that the initial broadcast that we put out were that we had an active shooter on 6th Street. Based on the information that was occurring at that time, that is what we believed happened, and I'll go into the incidents here in a moment. However, at this point, we do not believe, nor are we classifying this as an active shooter. What we had was two separate incidences that occurred in very close proximity to each other, both in location and time, that made us initially believe it was an active shooter. Uh, I'm going to go into each incident independently and uh, go through those and then uh, Commander Benavides from EMS will give you updates on the uh, individuals that have been transported to uh, the hospital and uh, then we'll be available for questions. But this all started at 2.17 this morning when APD received a call that we had a female that was shot in the 200 block of East 6th Street. Within the next minute or two, we've received multiple calls of shots being fired on 6th Street. Uh, officers, uh, this being 6th Street with officers in every block, officers were on scene immediately. Uh, the officers also heard shots and, and called in reports uh, that shots had been fired. Uh, as the officers were arriving on scene, they located additional victims. What we will describe uh, is that we had five individuals that were shot in this incident that occurred on 6th Street that we know of right now. Uh, one, a female that we believe to be in her 20s uh, is deceased. Uh, she was uh, deceased on scene. There were three other individuals that were transported to the hospital for medical care and there was one individual who refused transport. And Commander Benavides will go more specifically into the condition of all of those victims here shortly. But again, as officers arrived, as you can imagine, with this being shortly after 2 a.m. and the large crowds that we have on 6th Street at this time, uh, all the individuals leaving the bars, uh, it was a very chaotic scene. Uh, a lot of people running in different directions with all the gunshots that were coming out. Our officers did a fantastic job coming in and trying to get to the victims and get aid immediately. EMS, again, being so close by, was able to get in and immediately start providing medical assistance and transporting those that were uh, in need of care. As this incident was occurring, again, I said the initial incident occurred at 2.17 in the morning. We then had at 2.24 in the morning, we got a call of a subject being assaulted in the 800 block of Trinity near a parking garage. In this disturbance, uh, it was a disturbance that occurred in the parking garage, uh, one individual did pull out a weapon and fire it uh, at, a, at another individual. And so given the fact that we had just had multiple shots fired on 6th Street, then we have another incident occur several blocks away with shots being fired again in that incident. Uh, the initial concern was that we had an individual that was engaging in active shooter tactics in an entertainment district. But again, that is not what our assessment is at this point. These were two isolated incidents. In the second incident that occurred in the parking garage, we do not know that there was anyone that was struck by gunfire. We do not have any victims from that. There were other individuals in that parking garage that observed this disturbance and observed the suspect fire their weapon. They engaged the suspect, disarmed him, and uh, took him down. Uh, the suspect in that incident was subsequently transported to the hospital for treatment of injuries he received by the uh, citizens that came in and, and assisted in putting a stop to his violence. So again, that was a separate incident that was unrelated to the occurrences that happened here moments earlier on 6th Street. So from everything we can tell at this point through the initial investigation, these are two unrelated incidents that occurred in close proximity, both location and time. Um, we have taken, uh, we have multiple uh, individuals, witnesses that we are currently interviewing uh, down at APD headquarters. We had one individual who was initially noted as a person of interest. However, that person's status at this point is still undetermined. So we're speaking with that individual as well. As you can imagine, with there being so many people out at this time, uh, there were a lot of individuals that were giving us descriptions and those descriptions are, are uh, 
consistent to a certain extent, but as you would expect, not, not all the same. What we do at this point at least believe is that we've got either a light-skinned black male or Hispanic male in their 20s. But again, clothing descriptions and all were varied at that point. So that's all part of the ongoing investigation and we really can't go any further into that. I think what's important to note at this point, uh, again, I think we, we, we did a good job of coming in and securing the scene. Uh, in the day of social media that we live in today, we know that there are a lot of individuals that have captured either this incident or the aftermath of this incident on their cell phones or other personal devices. It's very important for us to successfully investigate and, and handle this incident that we obtain all of those videos. And we would ask that anyone that has video, whether it be on your cell phones or, or camcorders or whatever you may have, if you will please forward that to us at police3, just as it's spelled, P-O-L-I-C-E, the number three, police3 three at Austin, Texas, all spelled out and all together, dot gov, G-O-V. So again, that's police3 at Austin, Texas, dot gov. Uh, we also have our homicide tip line that's always available. So again, if there are individuals that have information regarding this incident that occurred tonight. There were a lot of people down here. We know people saw things, we know people heard things, and it's of the utmost importance that we capture as much of that information as we can. So if you have information that's important, our homicide tip line is 512-477-3588. And we ask that you call that number again if you have any questions. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna ask Commander Benavides to give updates on the status of the victims that were injured in these occurrences tonight, and then we'll open it up for any questions that you may have. However, realize we've got a lot going on right now. We're very early in the investigation. Uh, there's gonna be information that we can't discuss to protect the integrity of the investigation. However, we will take a few questions on, on and, and maybe be able to provide a little bit more information. Commander Benavides. As Chief Manley said, at, a, at or around 2.17 this morning, uh, we received a call for uh, multiple patients uh, reported uh, from a shooting um, with multiple GSWs. Um, in that, uh, from the first incident, as Chief Manley has already spoken, um, I will discuss the patients from the two separate incidents. In the first incident, uh, we were um, we treated and uh, evaluated five total patients. Uh, of those patients, one of them was pronounced dead on scene. Uh, as Chief Manley said, it was an approximated age of a 20s female. Uh, we subsequently transported uh, four additional patients, correction, that's three additional patients to University Medical Center Brackenridge. All of them are in uh, females, uh, approximated in their 30s. Um, they were all uh, transported with uh, serious but not expected to be life-threatening injuries. Um, we also obtained one refusal on the scene. On the second incident, as Chief Manley pointed out, uh, we had a victim that um, sustained injuries from a reported assault. Um, they too were transported to University Medical Center Brackenridge. That was a male, um, I believe that's a approximated 20s male, and um, he was transported with non-life-threatening injuries as well. Um, that's all we have for, for our site. And actually, let me uh, let me give just a little bit more information as, as, as to how all of this started on Sixth Street. So, our initial investigation, we believe that there was a disturbance between individuals, and the suspect in the shooting incident on Sixth Street pulled out a weapon and began firing that weapon into the crowd. Uh, and at which point, our these victims were struck. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Again, we're early on in the investigation, um, but if there are any uh, questions you may have, we'll take those. Shooting is, you're still looking for a shooter? Yes, we are still actively looking so for a uh, suspect. females and one male. That's true. From the first incident? All together, all tonight. Well, we had all together with both incidents would be six patients, but uh, five from the first. Okay, does anybody else from the media have questions for us? What are some of the challenges in this case right now? I'm sorry, let me go ahead. What are some of the biggest challenges that you have with the Sixth Street shooting just in general? What are some of the big obstacles that stand in your way? 
Well, again, I think that this one, uh, as far as obstacles, I think we have the benefit of the fact that I think there's a lot of people that have captured either the the things leading up to or the disturbance itself or the aftermath. So I think that it's important that we get our hands on all of those videos and we're able to uh, investigate those as part of the investigation. So again, we would ask that people call or send us the videos if you have them. Did APD release any Any shots? other questions from the media? Do you believe the suspect still armed, but is there a threat to public safety? Uh, as far as whether the suspect is still armed or not, we obviously we don't know that. We don't know who the suspect is. We've not had a chance to, to talk to them. Uh, as far as any threat to the community at this point, um, you know, the scene is secure. We've uh, we've locked down Sixth Street, as you can tell. It's an active uh, investigation. Um, so at this point on Sixth Street, we're not aware of any other any other threats. Any tasers? Any shots fired by the cops? Anybody else have any questions um, for us? You said that they um, fired open into the crowd. Was it, were these like unknown suspects or did these people know each other in an argument? It was an open firing random. That'll be part of the ongoing investigation, whether there's any relationship between the suspect and any of the victims that were struck. Anybody from uh, media have any more questions? Is that all the questions we have? I appreciate it. From the Daily Texan, could you repeat the ages or the ages you think the victims are? I'll let Dr. Commander Benavides answer that. So, um, the patients that we transported to University Medical Center Brackenridge were females approximated in their 30s, and then one male from the second incident approximated age in his 20s. And that was the suspect in the second? I don't know about suspect. It was just a, a, a patient that we transported. The male that was be... from, the, from the Trinity Garage. The individual from the garage, we do believe it's the individual that fired the shots in the garage that was then subsequently um, uh, taken down by some citizens that got involved, and we believe that he is the one that was transported for medical care. What's the crossroad on that garage, sir? Trinity and... It's the 800 block of Trinity. So there was a young lady that was shot in the chest earlier, and the police uh, applied pressure for about 15 minutes. Can you comment on why it took so long to get her to EMS? Uh, we show that EMS was on scene within minutes and folks were transported as, as soon as they were uh, stabilized. We'll take the last question. Thank you all. All right, thank you.